Hey y'all, today I'm gonna to talk about our pantry essentials. These are the things that I would just recommend kind of always having in your house. These are things that are gonna show up a lot in the recipes and when you buy in bulk or you know buy in large amount, you're just always gonna have. I'm not gonna try, or I am going to try and not throw recipes at you that are gonna have weird spices and things that you need 20 ingredients that you're only gonna use once because that's just not cost effective. I'm going to use things over and over again. So when you get this set up, you're gonna be good to go. And in the beginning, it might be a little overwhelming because if you don't have some of the stuff in your pantry, you are gonna have to put a little bit of money up front to get yourself set up. But once you are set up, you'll just replace every now and then and it's really gonna lower your overall cost. All right, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna start with is just white wine vinegar, nothing fancy. It, this one says Prosecco, it doesn't have to say Prosecco, just general white wine vinegar is good. We're also gonna do balsamic vinegar. This is another one you can tell, we've already been using this one. This is a good one to do. And I'm actually, these two oils here, I'm gonna actually pull these aside. So we're gonna talk about those in a minute. Salt, salt is always a really great thing. Sea salt is the what I like to use. I like to use my fine crystals because of just the way it works in cooking. I don't really care though. The only thing I care about is that you actually read the label on your salt. Which sounds weird, right? Shouldn't it just say salt? This one says sea salt. But there are in fact some salts out there that have a thing called dextrose in them. So read the label, make sure there's no dextrose in there, make sure it's just salt and you're good to go. A uh, quick note, sea salt doesn't actually have less sodium in it. It's still the same amount of sodium, so don't try and do a trick around there. Salt is salt. We also have some onion powder and garlic powder. These are classic staples, definitely wanna have these. Curry powder, two different kinds of mustard. I think mustard is really a wonderful flavor additive and if you get the right kind, it shouldn't have any sugar in it. So it's a really good way to add flavor and you will see we'll use this a lot, particularly in dressings. And uh, there's a fish dish that I love that takes mustard in it as well. So mustard is a great one. This seasoning, this Borsari seasoning mix is absolutely my favorite. You can pretty much add it to any kind of meat and it's gonna be pretty uh, yummy and you don't have to do a whole lot else. Be careful with the amount though. This does have a fair amount of salt in it. If you overdo it, it will get kind of salty. Then what do we have here? Cajun seasoning, I love Cajun seasoning. It's just got paprika, onion, garlic, marjoram, thyme, fennel, uh, cumin, and cayenne. So lots of different um, lovely flavors in there and it makes everything bright and colorful too. Of course we have our pepper, right? We have to have our salt and pepper together. I like oregano, especially if you're gonna cook some Italian flavored food, you need some oregano in there. Our tagine spices. Now this one is one that you, a lot of you guys may not have ever used before. This is kind of an odd one. This is a Moroccan spice mix. We've got again paprika, cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, crushed red chili pepper, black pepper, and a cardamom in here. A Little bit different. I'm gonna be showing you how to use this in recipes though, so you're gonna figure out how to use this and it's gonna provide a lot of flavor to your food, which is really the goal. Then we've got, what do we have next? Red pepper. I add this to everything, so you can use red pepper and everything, add some spice, and then again, some cayenne pepper to also add a little bit of spice and flavor. So I moved all these, we're gonna just move these aside, and we're gonna talk about our fats. That's because we have to have fats and oils to cook with. Any of the fats that I have you use in, an, in a recipe, whether I tell you to use butter or avocado oil or olive oil, you can use any of these other ones in there. They can actually be used interchangeably, which is wonderful. And it also means you get to choose which fats you like. And there are fats that I haven't included here. I don't include pork lard or uh, duck fat, which if you've never had any kind of um, anything roasted in duck fat, you're missing out. Definitely try that. I also don't have coconut oil, which is another really great fat that I highly recommend people using if they like it. I personally think coconut oil adds a bit of a flavor to my food and I don't always want it there, so I generally don't use it, unless I'm cooking some really wonderful coconut shrimp, which we will definitely be doing. Otherwise, I like to have avocado oil. This is one of my favorite ones because it can do a really high smoke point, which means that you can put it in the oven for roasting and it's gonna not uh, burn at a high level. Olive oil is really good for our salad dressings and you know you can definitely use this on the stove as well But we're not deep frying anything so we don't have to be too concerned about high high smoke point oils I do actually like my uh, my animal fats. This is bison tallow, which you may or may not have ever seen before Tallow is what we call the fat from beef for the most part or from uh, what are called ruminant animals So this is bison tallow. You can use beef tallow again. You can use lard pork lard You can use uh, duck fat all of the above are really great and butter 
is the tricky part for most people. You wanna make sure both of these butters that I have here are from grass-fed cows. Kerrygold has been a long time staple in the paleo community, really love this one. And you'll see that these are both unsalted as well because you're gonna be adding salting when cooking. I'd rather you not have salted butter, that way it's more, um, a little bit more flexible. You can decide how much butter goes in there. Both of these are grass-fed, grass-raised animals. That's really what I'm looking for. And they are, um, so they're high, they're high, high quality when it comes to that. Butter, for some people though, can be a tricky issue. It can cause inflammation, it can make you feel real junky, so you have to learn what works for your body. What I recommend, if you've never done it before, I recommend actually taking butter out of your diet, taking all dairy out for a little while, and adding it back in and see how you feel. If you do okay with butter, use butter. If I give you a recipe that has butter in it though, and you don't wanna use butter, you don't like butter, you don't feel good on butter, you don't have to use the butter. Use avocado oil, use olive oil, use beef tallow instead. It's all up to you. All right, thank you for joining me on this video and I'll see you next time.